Okay, Father, this is a great opportunity for you to tell us a bit about what you would like to do in the chapel and why you would like to do it. So if you could, first of all, just start with your reasons for planning to do uh, what you would like to do. Well, Nicola, we have a very beautiful church built in 1877 by Lady Londonderry and she built it out of her own expense. Mm -hmm. So we've been very gifted with this very beautiful church. It is iconic because it was designed by an English architect by the name of Joseph Hansom of the Hansom Cabs in London, mm -hmm. Foggy Night, Westminster Bridge and all that. So he is a very important architect. So architecturally, it's a gem in our parish of Newton Arts and Cumber. So our plan now is to look at the church for a variety of reasons. There's a practical arm and also there's a liturgical embellishment arm, as it were. So the practical arm is to really look at our heating system, which is approaching 30 years old same age as myself in terms of ordination <laughs> almost anyhow so the heating system has to be looked at and reviewed in terms of its longevity yeah. our pipe work is under the ground which is not particularly helpful when it comes to actual work that needs to be done on an ongoing basis in terms of maintenance so our plan is to lift the pipe work above ground so that it will not only enhance the church in terms of the heat but also accessibility and to, to help with its longevity for the future of the church. And heating the building is vital to keep damp out. And the heating system has worked very successfully, but we need to review it. That's one aspect. The other aspect is the mosaic floor, which was put in the, 19, put in in the 1960s. But the mosaic floor, when we lifted the purple carpet tiles, we discovered that the mosaic floor is not intact. So a lot of the floor has sadly been damaged where pipework was put in. So our plans really are to replace uh, the, the floor in a sense, but to tile on top of the mosaic. It's too expensive to renew that mosaic, which was put down by Italians in the 1960s. So we have to put a new floor in on top of that. But in order to do that, we have to lift the floor in the entrance porch or the atrium, as it's called, to drop it to the proper level so that we can tile right through from the main entrance, which is at the west door, right through to the east, which is where the tabernacle will be, please God, and the sanctuary is. So those are two very practical areas. There's also issues around health and safety. So the floor must be level and it will be right throughout the church. The other factor too is the sanctuary area is, can be a little bit dangerous. I'm young and hearty and able to bounce onto the steps, but for some people maybe coming or visitors who are not familiar with the geography of the sanctuary, they could trip very easily. There's a circle surrounding uh, at the bottom of the altar which takes up a lot of room. So we're trying to make it more accessible and health and safety proof as, as best we can. And in behind, at the back of the sanctuary, in the uh, apse area, which is the sort of semicircular aspect at the, at, at the east of the church, you will see a wooden frame, as it were, with seating. Now that has to be removed because there are several radiators behind there and we can't get near them. So for aspects of just simply accessibility. So it's been a while, Father, since there has been any work done on the chapel. No work except maintenance work, painting, etc., has been done to St. Patrick's since 1988 in its interior, I might add. So the interior has not been touched. I mean, the carpet in the sanctuary is 1988. It doesn't really owe us anything at this stage. And the... So we, 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 the work has to be done on the interior. The outside was completed uh, in the 2000s, uh, I think in the early 2000s, just short, not long before I came to the parish. Okay, so now that you've set out the very practical reasons, could you just tell us a bit about the very personal liturgical reasons, which I know you're very passionate about? I've been thinking about this for about six years. This has not just come out of the ether in the past few months. This has been 
really being planned. I've worked with an architect as well to look at designs. So we've taken a good study of the church and to be honest with you we felt that it was important perhaps to bring back its character, its architectural character. Very unique from 1877. Now many of the pieces that we would have had have sadly gone but we do have a number of pieces. We have an altar, Our Lady's altar, which is an original 1877 altar, which would become the new main altar. We do have parts of the original high altar, which were embedded in a wall, which I have freed, and they will be hopefully brought into context in a new high altar. Mm -hmm. So you'll have the main altar, which is something we already have, you have a high altar, most of the components we already have. It just has to be brought into shape for a high altar, which can be done by a, uh, a sculptor or someone who's very good at working with stone. And then we have, as, pa as the patrimony of our parish, we have Stations of the Cross, which are from the 19th century. Now, not everybody has seen them because when I first arrived, I discovered them in the attic. Right. and they were very badly pocked with damp. Um, so I, over this past eight years, I have sent one or two away every year to be restored. Okay. They're now all fully restored and they are also unique because they're in Irish as well. So our plan is to create what's called a rear dos. And a rear dos is essentially a panel or display which sometimes has works of art displaying a particular theme. It could be the birth of Christ. It could be the resurrection of Christ. So in our case, we have Stations of the Cross from the 19th century, which depict obviously the passion and death of Christ. So our plan would be to put these into a frame and that frame would be adjustable in that you have two arms, one to the right and left, and a central panel, and these can be moved accordingly so that the display can be seen by all. And the tabernacle will be brought into the centre, and so this is the risen Christ in our midst, so we, we have a, a, a catechetical display of the story of salvation, the life, the death of Christ, and the risen Christ in the Eucharist in our midst. Yeah. And our hope then is to put a uh, um, an icon uh, which would be commissioned to represent the risen Christ in our midst. So these are quite unique and uh, they're, they're very beautiful and I think as part of our patrimony they should be used accordingly to help in the growth of faith. So we're, we're now going to install those and bring them into this context. So whenever you walk into the church you're coming in through the, the west door the first thing you'll see is the Celtic cross of St. Patrick in the flooring, in the tiling. To right and left, you'll be greeted by four saints. You will have St. Patrick, St. Finian, St. Comgall and St. Columbanus greeting you as you make your way through. You will then see the two coats of arms, one of the Diocese of Down and Connor and one of the Londonderry family of Lady Elizabeth who built the church and then you make your way through the aisle and you're actually walking on the four evangelists so we're called to walk and build our lives on the gospel so you're led into the sacred space which will be highly demarcated and pushed back much further than it is now to create much more space at the front of the sanctuary but also creating a very clear demarcation of the Holy of Holies, the sanctuary itself. And it's into that context you will come across the altar from 1877, and then the high altar and the rear doors. So it should impact on the senses, which is exactly what it should do. And the liturgical embellishment then lifts our hearts, lifts our spirits. It's their homilies in art, in stone, wood, that should uh, have an impact on our senses and inspire us, really, in terms of faith.
So the church has a very unique story, Father, involving Lady Londonderry. Just tell us a bit about that and a bit about the history of the chapel. Well, Lady Londonderry was, was a, a very important individual because she had an, her own personal journey. Now, she lived at the time of Cardinal Newman, uh, and he was a very pivotal fact, factor in her life because I know that there was correspondence between herself and Cardinal Newman so much so that she began her own spiritual journey and became a convert to Catholicism. Now, she had built some churches in the Anglican tradition in England, but this was something so important to her in terms of her own personal journey. Now, she would have lived in the summer residence in uh, Mount Stuart, and uh, she would have had guests, royal guests, coming to stay. So she wanted to, to build a church that was fitting, not only for God, to honour God, but also for her guests and for the people, the Catholic population here. So she not only built the church out of her own expense, but we were given the land as well. So we owe a great deal to the Londonderry family. They are intricately linked with our parish and both the ends of the parish, not only here, but also Cumber. So there's a very significant influence there. And what we'd like to do is to bring that out a lot more, not only in terms of the interior of the church, but honouring the work of the architect Joseph Hansom. Notwithstanding the, the great work that was done by other architects even more recently, but sometimes there, there comes a time when you need to review and to think again. So I think this story needs to be told and celebrated. Well, as we know, Father, these things, they are expensive. Um, so if you could just tell us a little bit about the cost, um, about how you plan to raise the cost and how people can help you raise the, the money that you need. Well, we're looking at a, a, at a project here that's going to cost £300,000. That's just, if you say it quickly enough. Anyhow, we break that down. Now, the parish over this past eight years or so since I've been here, we've been, we, we have had to pay our debt off. So we're not in debt, which is a very good position to be in. And thanks to the kindness and generosity of the people of the parish, we have been able to maintain the buildings. We have two Victorian buildings, so we've got to maintain those. Cumber is fully refurbished and restored, though maintenance still has to be achieved there too and carried out. But we have to raise that 300,000. Now we have saved 130,000. So we're looking at 170,000 pounds we're asking people. So we have a variety of ways of encouraging people to support this particular project. One is through pledging, and that can be by a variety of amounts over this one year. So it could be 50 pounds a month, it could be 10 pounds a month. There's no particular fixed amount. We're asking pe people to give what they can. Another way is through donations, people giving a one-off donation, all of these are beneficial because we can claim back the gift aid, which will make a big difference to helping to gather the money for this wonderful project. And thirdly, there's a, a means by just giving. So we have a page which you can easily access on our website, www.newtonardsandcumberparish.com. So it's there and you can go in and uh, you can donate online through this particular Just Giving page. We've, uh, it's also hoped that it will attract people who are baptised here, who are working abroad, uh, who have real connections with family here. We all need your support. We have ongoing fundraising, of course, to continue. And the normal giving, which people are so kind uh, in doing so, is needed to keep the parish running and keep it maintained. That's vital for us. So with the running costs of the everyday, heat, light, all of those things, uh, and general maintenance, and we also have this push now for one year in relation to raising the funds. And if people, and I'm sure and I know that the people in this parish are very generous, very willing to help, but it's very important that they are fully informed about what we're doing. So that they, they, are, not, they are part of this story you know, just not in theory, they are part of this journey, all of us. So when people look back, at least this generation uh, has done its very best. Well, I know you've already mentioned Cumber Father and the, the work that has been done there to date, but why, uh, I suppose, parishioners may ask why 
um, they should contribute to, to the chapel in Newton Arts. Well, that's a very valid point. But what I would say is that we are one parish and that Newton Arts and Cumber are united as one. And also the parish has spent £300,000 on restoring Our Lady of the Visitation Church. And many of the contributions for that came from not only Cumber, but Newton Arts and outside the parish as well. So I think we need to keep a sense of we're all one here. We're all here to support one another and we are one parish and that's absolutely vital. We're all in this together and it's vital that we support each other and that's crucial at this particular juncture. I imagine another um, issue or question, Father, I suppose may be with falling church numbers and I suppose the challenge that the church is facing, um, could the money may or should the money um, be spent in other areas, for example, maybe youth or, or, or priest training or things like that? Well, I think that if parishioners were to, to look at the context of the parish, we've been working very hard in relation to our young people. So we've, we've established a youth club. It's, in fact, it's, a, it's a, a reigniting of the youth club that was so successful in the past. And this particular youth club is going extremely well, so it's been up and running now this past few years and very successful. Thanks to the wonderful dedication and generosity of time of parishioners. So that's already functioning. We have very close ties with our schools. Uh, we know our schools inside out. Uh, and I personally visit the schools on a reasonably regular basis, both in Cumber and Newton Arts. So we are certainly doing our best there. We actually have a student from our parish who has just begun in the seminary, John Leonard. So John, we're very pleased. We're the only parish where there is a student uh, in relation to this year. We have only three students for the priesthood in the Diocese of Downland Connor. And we are one of those, we are parishes that have encouraged and nurtured, along with his family, of course, uh, in terms of his faith, and he is beginning this journey. So that's, 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 that's a courageous act in these days. So there's a lot of very great positives, and we have close links with the post-primary as well. We're always trying to engage parents in the midst of the frenetic aspects of life, and trying to reach parents and to draw them in and to see the worth of supporting their children. So we are involving the two schools, both St Finian's and uh, St Mary's in Cumber. So our hope is that both respective schools, Newton Arts and Cumber, will be highly involved in this unique opportunity. It's not often that a restoration takes place in the lifetime of a child going to school. So both St Finian's and Newton Arts and St Mary's will have the chance to come and visit during its restoration, maybe look at projects in relation to the history of the church right on their doorstep and have an even deeper understanding. So we're going to be really working hand in glove with the schools and we're very close relations with the schools themselves and through the interest that we try to motivate in regard to the children and the staffs, we then will engage the parents as well in helping with fundraising and uh, things like a non-uniform day, for instance, can help to, in all sorts of ways to, to, to provide money that we can use for the project. So there's a variety of elements and the schools are fabulous in terms of their wonderful support. In so many areas, like Trocro, for instance, during Lent, but this is going to be related to our own parish now, where we need their support big time. And I think they will love it, cherish it, and learn a great deal from it. So what I'm sensing, Father, really, in essence, is that the church has a fantastic story. Um, you know, you want to continue that story and restore parts of it that maybe, um, you know, that have gone missing over time. And most importantly, to bring people along and bring parishioners along to be part of that story. Absolutely. Vital that everyone is informed. Vital that everyone is part of the journey and that we all have ownership over this. But ultimately, it's not just for us, but it's for future generations to inspire them too in faith and to be encouraged on that journey. And I, as I say, I hope that future generations will be able to live up to the same task in another hundred years or so. But everyone is part of this journey and it's, it's about 
the glory of God ultimately. When I think of the priests that served in this parish in difficult times over the years, and the parish has existed since roughly 1812, although its origins go back to the Dominican Abbey here in Newton Arts and also to Movilla Abbey from the 6th century. So we have a pretty constant history here in Newton Arts, going right back to the early Celtic Church right up until today. I am here, what, almost nine years and it's been a wonderful learning curve for me personally but I have seen the wonderful support, the camaraderie, the sense of identity is extremely important, but they are all woven into the very essence of the story of the parish, but ultimately doing so for the glory of God and the journey of faith. And so, as I say, the building is not a museum, but uh, both buildings, both the Victorian churches are not museums. They are living, vibrant, assemblies for a vibrant community of faith. Sometimes it's about just engaging with that faith that's extremely important if you want to be part of that team and we constantly invite. Sometimes we have to challenge out of love. <laughs> <laughs>